Now let's get going, folks, and we'll begin like we will every day here on Menzoid Mornings with something that's really grinding my gears. Time now for the Menzoid Monologue. Well, last Friday wasn't a good day for Mama Yasmin Nakuda or her adopted ward, Darwin. Nakuda is the real estate lawyer and Darwin is the seven-month-old Rhesus McKay that was captured on December 9th. It should be noted that both Mama and Monkey are now somewhat famous in a honey boo-boo kind of way. In any event, Nakuda was in court fighting for the return of her monkey. Darwin is currently living an allegedly loveless and drab existence at a primate sanctuary called Storybook Farm. But despite the name of the institution, there will be no happy ending for Nakuda, especially since it was alleged in court that she had spanked her monkey on more than one occasion. So it was that Judge Michael Brown ruled that Darwin would be stay and put. Uh, for what it's worth, 30 camera crews were at the Oshawa courthouse to cover the trial, folks. On the same day, only three camera crews were at Queen's Park to cover statements being made by Premier-elect Kathleen Wynne and the leader of the opposition, Tim Hudak. Golly, what does that say about, what does that say about the state of journalism in 2013? Now, you may recall the backstory to this tale. Darwin used his brain and opposable thumbs to get out of a cage in Nakuda's car. He then got out of the car itself, which was parked at an IKEA parking lot. Darwin immediately stood out that December afternoon, folks, not because he's a primate or because he wore a shearling coat to die for. Nope. Darwin stood out because he was easily the best behaved bipedal creature at that furniture store. I mean, really, folks, have you ever been to an IKEA during a pre Christmas sale? It makes an episode of Jackass resemble high tea at Buckingham Palace. Indeed, a monkey waltzing around a car park has nothing over a mob of stressed out Yuletide shoppers fighting over Farglav duvet covers priced at 70% off. But I digress. Alas and alack, turns out monkeys are verboten in Ontario, even though you can apparently keep a rat as a pet, which is kind of like the bylaw that prohibits spitting on the sidewalk. But no charge for vomiting. However, it should be noted that Nakuda refers to her monkey as her child, and she considers herself to be Darwin's mother. Now, maybe she genuinely feels this way, especially given Darwin's inherent cutie pie factor, all of which begs the question, however, what sort of mother leaves her child unattended in the parking lot? Still, this wouldn't be the first time a member of Homo sapiens decided to raise a monkey as a human. That was indeed the plot line for the 1951 tour de force Bedtime for Bonzo, in which Professor Peter Boyd, played by a guy called Ronald Reagan, attempts to teach human morals to a chimpanzee in an attempt to solve the age-old nature versus nurture question. He goes on to hire Diana Lynn to pose as the chimp's mother while he plays father figure. This kind of fumbling is the mark of a bachelor, and bachelors shouldn't have babies. Now, should they? Especially not a baby like Bonzo. Are you mystified, bewildered, and puzzled? You needn't be. All these shenanigans take place in a hilarious new Hollywood movie called Bedtime for Bonzo, starring Ronald Reagan, Diana Lynn, and Bonzo, <laughs> that amazing chimp. It started as an experiment. But the professor soon discovered he couldn't be a papa without a mama. So he hired a housekeeper, and then the fun began. Ah! It's a monkey! Look, all I'm saying is that post-Bonzo, Ronald Reagan would go on to become one of the greatest presidents in U.S. history. And if the influence of Bonzo helped end the Cold War and tear down the Iron Curtain, then maybe deferring to a simian can indeed pay dividends. Besides, even human pop culture has surely been enriched by monkey culture. King Kong went ape for Fay Ray, for example, and sometimes the inverse is true when the worlds of people and primates collide. Check out this video evidence circa 1976.
That'll never get old, folks. And yet, could it be that perhaps the municipal bylaw officers and the courts are right and that monkeys have no place in the concrete jungle? Certainly, that was the cautionary tale conveyed via the 1972 film Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. Set in the future, we learn that all the dogs and cats in the world have been wiped out by an epidemic. Humans being humans, we required new pets, but gerbils and hamsters are so soul-crushingly lame, so we end up taking on apes as pets, eventually making them servants and then outright slaves. The only thing with slaves, though, folks, is that it will inevitably be an uprising. And wouldn't you know it, some dumb ape gets his paws on the button next to the sign that says, do not press this button. And the next thing you know, there's a nuclear apocalypse and we're the slaves and the monkeys are the masters. Take your sticking paws off me, you damn dirty ape. So you see, I'm really quite torn when it comes to little Darwin. Granted, a municipality should have the right to determine what creatures it wants within its city limits. Nobody wants a Nile crocodile or a python residing at the bungalow right next door to the daycare center. But on the flip side, Darwin has known nothing aside from cohabitating with humans. And allegedly the other monkeys at Storybook Farm are giving him the cold shoulder. So by laws be damned, there is a degree of cruelty when we separate Darwin from Miss Nakuda, and surely a hallmark of humanity is that intangible quality called empathy. Bottom line, I say let's reunite Mama and Monkey on the proviso she never again takes Darwin on a shopping safari to Ikea. And that's the Menzoid Monologue.